I'm in a space right now in my life where I'm manifesting at an accelerated rate. I'm at a place in my life now where I've slowed down. Uh, I work less than I've ever worked in my life before in the sense of hours um, and in the sense of what work usually means to people. Every moment of the day, I get to make the choice about what it is I want to do for the day, how I want to spend my day, um, whether I want to read, whether I want to apply principles, whether I want to practice manifesting, whether I want to serve clients, whether I want to create a curriculum, whether I want to set up a, uh, a mentoring appointment, whatever it is that I do, it just simply does not feel like work. I've worked for myself for over 18 years, I think now. Heck, it could be longer than that. I know that I will never go back because I know that I will never have to go back because this is what I believe and I've created a reality for myself and manifested a lifestyle that requires that or has given me the freedom to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'll never have to go back. So. What I've always wanted to do, even when I had my school, my passion was enlightening minds in the pursuit of intellectual curiosity and spiritual wellness. That is what I'm passionate about. I want people to climb outside of the box in which they live. I want them to be able to really ascertain what the nature of reality is. I believe that part of my mission here on this planet is to get those people who are willing to step outside of the constraints of self-imposed limitations to realize that they are the authors of their reality and they really can have anything that they want. But that first, they must brainwash themselves. First, they must understand that they are victims, or maybe I should say they uh, have been indoctrinated to a reality that has nothing to do with the truth, that has nothing to do with empowerment, that has nothing to do with serving your highest good, but has everything to do with separating you from who you truly are, from separating you from the divine God that is within, from uh, with separating you from every and anything in this universe that stands for abundance, prosperity, love, bliss, communion, and so forth and so on. You have been sold a bale of goods. You've been sold a lie and a falsehood. And for me, what I love to do is to help people unlock the madness and help them to get out of a mindset that doesn't serve them. I would venture to say that the majority of people on this planet live and exist in an unawakened state, that they get up every day mindlessly, failing to realize that they get to create and they can take charge of their lives and live the life of their dreams. They operate in the world at a level of non-awareness that causes them to be a victim, that causes them to live in fear, to, that causes them to feel as though there's never enough, whether it's never enough time, um, there's never enough money. There are never enough opportunities. Um, they, they themselves are not enough. They live in a space where it has become acceptable rather than a form of mental illness. It has become acceptable to believe that other people block your path. And there's nothing wrong with that because I was in that space 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, I was in a space maybe less than that ago at certain times of thinking that other people controlled my destiny. Maybe it was the color of my skin. Maybe it was due to my education level. Maybe for others of us, it's based on where we came from. It could be uh, what you feel is your religion. Whatever it is, is the block that you think is blocking you. That's why it's blocking you because that's what you think. And so I'm here today to say it's time out for all of that. There's no more time left to continue to embrace these outmoded, ineffectual ways of thinking. That's not what life is supposed to be about. The heaven 
that you aspire to that's somewhere else is the heaven that you create right here. The abundance and the perfect balance and wholeness that you were born into still exists right here. You are your own limitation. So the two principles I wanted to talk about today that I feel by embracing these two principles and really understanding them, it can open up a pathway to you being able to shift your life, to shift your per perception, and to change the way in which you experience your reality. And the first of those, got an ant, the first of those is that there are no coincidences not in the traditional way in which we think of what a coincidence is. For me, a coincidence is a coinciding of events, which I have decided to define as purposeful events. But most people think that co coincidences are chance-like happening, so we'll stick with that. There are no chance-like happenings, and what does that actually mean? What that means is that every single thing that is going on in your life, every single thing that you think, every single thing that you feel, every single thing that you are doing, every single thing that you experience is part of a grand design, okay? A divine decree in which you yourself also play an important role. There are no coincidences. Things are not just happening to us, all right? Life is supposed to happen through us. We're supposed to be in such a flow, in such a harmony, that things happen through us, that we manifest the glory of God within, through us and around us, and we become witnesses to our own greatness. Nothing that is going on in your life is happening to you. Everything that is going on in your life is happening because of you. It's happening because of you okay so if everything in your life is happening because of you you're the only one that can change the story you're the only one that can make the revisions you're the only one that can rewrite the script right because nothing is happening in your life by accident so what does this mean this means that we have to take creative control over our lives we have to become conscious. We have to become awake. In other words, we have to wake up. A lot of times we use the word woke to refer to things or people and we have no idea oftentimes the people who are using it what that actually means. To be aware or to be awake means to be a witness to or to be aware or to be awakened to in every single moment. It means to be conscious at all times of what you are creating and to understand that in each and every moment you have been bestowed a divine gift to create the world the way you want to create it and that anything that you can imagine, absolutely anything whatsoever, is something that you can bring into physical manifestation, something that you can bring into existence. Now, this is contrary to what you've been programmed to believe. You've been programmed to think that to give away your power and that externalizing your power to this grand entity somewhere out in space that's bigger than life, that's larger than you, is gonna be your ticket to heaven. Um, you've been socialized to think that um, everything that happens to you is a result of things outside of yourself and that you have no free will or control over your life and that you do not author your life, that you are instead a victim of your circumstances and as such life is hard life is difficult life is burdensome and that you must plan for future insurance policy that includes you graduating and going on off to heaven and living ha happily ever after so when you believe in that particular paradigm whether it's true or not is not the issue i'm not here to debate the truth i don't debate the truth because i think the truth morphs 
And for me, the truth is based on what you believe and your beliefs will determine how reality shapes itself. So if that's what you believe, then that's fine. This is not a video you should probably be watching in the sense that you're waiting for something outside of yourself for a time somewhere far, far in the future for your life to change, which means that this reality that you should be grateful for is not something that you're actually working towards trying to impact in some way. You're not taking advantage of the blessing of life. Life is about growth. Life is about expansion. Life is about dreaming of the possibilities. Life is about having an infinity of opportunities that you're presented with each day and each and every moment. Life is about conscious creation. So in order to understand that there are no coincidences, okay, you have to embrace the idea that everything that's happening in your life is something that you have created. And the worst part of that is most people don't want to think about the things that they've created in their life because those things mostly are not pleasant. They don't want anything that requires them to be responsible for creating these things. But the beauty is the more that you recognize that you have created where you find yourself today, the greater your level of empowerment to embrace the next thing, which is, hey, I can change what's going on in my life. I don't have to be in this space. Nobody has done anything to me that I cannot transform or transmute. So you realize that you are, are indeed a transmuter of energy, that you actually get to change your circumstances and you start figuring out a way to actually do that. But the other side is that of that is a place of disempowerment. It's a place of not really understanding who you truly are as a magnificent, bright light, a spiritual being, a spiritual entity, a spiritual energy that has incarnated and come into this world in order to experience materialism, the material reality. And so to accept that means that you begin to take responsibility for how you think, how you feel, what you spend your time doing, your attitudes, your perceptions, the people you spend your time around, and everything in your environment, externally and internally and you began to manipulate those things and experiment with those things and you play with those things. And you start to realize, wow, when I awakened this morning in a conscious state and I set certain intentions and I did certain spiritual practices, my day shaped itself up like so. But on the days where I wake up and I'm a victim of myself and I'm a victim of the world and the first thing I do is get up and complain about having to go to work or having to do something else, when the beauty of the sun and the gloriousness of my existence dawns upon me when I open my beautiful eyes in the morning instead of gratitude I'm in a state of disbelief I'm in a state of disbelief is what what, what it's called in certain religions when you when you become ungrateful you you're in a state of disbelief okay so I wake up it, Islam refers to disbelief as, as being a Kafir. So you're in a state of ingratitude. And by being in a state of ingratitude, you actually fall out of favor with all of the universal forces that are here to move you forward and teach you the truth about who you really are. So you have got to understand that this universe is governed by certain spiritual and energetic principles and that you cannot exist outside of those principles and that that is the justice and the fairness that all of the scriptures have ever talked about. You shall reap what you sow. The divine laws of cause and effect, all of the things that govern this universe, while these are not man-made laws that can be broken or are flexible, these are sustaining, everlasting, and eternal laws to which we are all subject to. Which means either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution, right? Either you get on board and you figure out how to use these spiritual and energetic principles and you start living your life and you start being grateful for the beautiful opportunity to exist as a being down here having this lovely multi-dimensional experience and you take your life in the direction 
of your greatest joy and you take the lives of those people that you come into contact with in the direction of their greatest joy and you live your best life and you stop waiting and you stop making excuses you become a conscious creator in each and every moment there's a litany of work that has to be done because you have to undo a whole lot of programming like I told you, you have to brainwash yourself. And this is what I work with people in doing each and every day. Okay, this is a process that requires some work. But I can guarantee you, the return on your investment will be greater than anything that you have ever imagined. The second principle that I wanted to talk to you about today, which is critical. This is critical. And that is... There is no such thing as lack. Nope. There is no such thing as scarcity. There is no such thing as impoverishment. God, source, supreme consciousness, the unified field, whatever you call that creative spiritual web that conjoins all of creation and pulsates through all things including yourself God did not create lack I want you to think about that for a second God did not create lack man created lack man created lack it is a man-made social construct that was designed to remove you from the truth of who you really are and to sever your connection with your own divinity, okay? This has been done for some thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And you will, did not come here to live the reality of lack, of scarcity, or of poverty. If you live these realities, it is a function of your mind and it has nothing to do with the actual reality that exists. And that's what you have to remember. God did not create lack. If you look around you, do you, do you see any lack in, in the greenery behind me? The sun, the clouds, the earth beneath my feet, the wind beneath my wings, animals all in creation, flourishing, living in balance and harmony, doing what they're supposed to do. Did the sun struggle to come up this morning? I don't think so. Did the birds have problems chirping? Is Mother Earth having any difficulty in a state of constant renewal, regardless of what we do here as her children in her belly? Look at this. This is magnificent. When is the last time you went outside with your feet on the earth, and experience the glory of being connected to the cosmos and the gift of being fully present in the moment in order to move your life forward in the direction in which you want to go in you've got to get to you've got to move to the state of awareness that helps you to understand that lack does not exist it cannot be something that you pay lip service to okay and it's a constant state of refinement because you're constantly trying to rewrite the programs of your consciousness that are etched in your subconscious and hanging on for dear life. So it's not the kind of thing you get to affirm one day and then forget about it every other day. It has to permeate your being. You have to really understand that um, there's nothing in this universe that you can't have. There's nothing in this universe that runs out. Um, everything in this universe is self-sustaining, self-perpetuating. Everything continues to grow and multiply. All of the beings procreate and that life is a beautiful, perfect uh, interplay of bliss, joy, marvels, and miracles and that you have been placed in this situation to partake of the wonders of creation and that to do anything less requires that you look inside yourself and that you ask yourself what am I doing wrong where am I out of alignment what is it that I need to adjust okay 
where is it that I have a limiting belief or something that is holding my reality in place in such a way that I know I'm not in alignment with the truth that I say that I actually believe. So when you embrace that there is no lack, then you then come to the natural next uh, conclusion, which is uh, abundance and prosperity is all, always flowing, right? It's all around me. So then the next obvious conclusion would be, well, then why am I not experiencing this? And that's where you have to say to yourself, in some way, I'm cut off from that. In some way, there is a blockage or there's something that is cutting me off from experiencing my divine reality, the one in which I came here to experience. And that's when you start to do the work. That's when you open your eyes and you say, you know what, I didn't come here for this. This is not the reality that I'm supposed to be having. This may be the reality that other people have chosen to have, but this is not the one that I'm choosing. I'm choosing beauty. I'm choosing wealth. I'm choosing riches. I'm choosing manifesting great relationships. I'm choosing legacy, okay? I'm choosing prosperity consciousness. I'm choosing the gift of life. I'm choosing gratitude. I'm choosing love, okay? I'm choosing to experience my reality and to be a creator being in each and every moment. So these two principles, okay? Accepting that nothing happens by coincidence and that you are constantly drawing to you the things that you have manifested, whether you have done it consciously or unconsciously, whether you've done it with your eyes wide open or asleep at the wheel, everything that's going on in your life is something that you have worked very hard to create, especially if it's not working for you. Because when things are working for you, you don't have to work hard to create them. They start to happen and you start to see a compound effect. And before you know it, the wind beneath your wings is so intense that nothing can hold you back because your vibration is so high that it becomes easy for you to attract this as your constant state of being. And so realizing that you are a creator and understanding the responsibility that you have to whom much is given, much is required, okay? That means that you have been given a gift and you will not be allowed to misuse your gift and think that you're gonna walk on, on this earth and be okay. It, the universe doesn't work that way either, okay? You have come here with a divine mission, a soul contract, a purpose, something that must be fulfilled. And until and unless you fulfill it, you will live in perpetual scarcity, physical scarcity, mental and emotional scarcity, a state of spiritual dry land, basically is what I'm saying. And the second principle that I mentioned to you is just as key. You cannot negate either of these principles. You must understand that the universe was not built on a deficit. I don't care what they told you on page one of that economics book, the scarcity of resources. I never forget the, 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 the multitude of times in either a sociology or history class or world geography or an economics class where in the first chapter they discuss with you and they spend a lot of time indoctrinating you to the scarcity of resources to put you in a mindset of individual individuality or individualism, um, a, a, a ruthless pursuit of competition, and the idea that there's never enough. And so if there's never enough, how do you get to feel enough? If there's never enough, you, you yourself aren't gonna ever feel enough either, are you? So that's the first uh, primordial almost sin. <laughs> That, that, that we were told that you need to let go of and accept and embrace that you live in a world of plenty. And once you begin to consider, to understand these two principles, they begin to set the stage for your personal empowerment. Now you must go about the business of creating new experiences, understanding what it means to be a conscious creator, 
figuring out the multitude of different ways that you can consciously create and embracing those ways that work best for you. And then last but not least, living your best possible life. You're with Tunisia Ali of Butterfly Transformations, beautiful butterflies and perfect people. What a joy it is to be alive and to be on the planet at this time in our history where there are those of us who are trying to, who are raising our vibrations ever so high each and every day and taking our destinies in our hands and becoming the masters of our fate. I work with women to connect them to the realities of who they are. Men as well to help them engage their divine feminine. All of us to engage our divine feminine. I help women to gain clarity, up-level their mindsets, clear and heal energetic and emotional blocks, and last but not least, manifest abundance. Butterfly transformations. You can reach me in the description. I provide spiritual mentoring services as well as life coaching services. I am also a certified healer. My degree is in education. I have been enlightening young minds and many minds for over 20 some odd number of years. And I love and am passionate about helping people to open their eyes to the reality of their own inner divine. Okay? So I hope that you have a beautiful, marvelous, love-filled, prosperous, and productive day. And on to the rest of your afternoon or morning.